His government is cracking down on sectors like technology, private education, entertainment, gaming. Is China still a safe place to invest? Let's hear it from Tan Ding Bu, an investment veteran of 40 years. I think the first factor that everyone has to bear in mind is that whichever market that you invest in, uh, there will always be downside risk and upside potential. So given that the crackdowns have been going on for about 9 to 12 months, many of the sectors, many of the stocks, many of the companies that have been affected have seen their stock prices uh, falling by quite a substantial margin, you know, 30%, 40%, 50%. Depending on the sectors and the companies that you're looking at, I think the fact that the stock prices have dropped so much, I think they would have discounted a lot of the possible negative or risk factors that would be associated with the crackdowns. Given the intention, the objective of the tightening of the government's regulations in China, which overall in the long term are positive for the economy, and if the company is well managed, it will also be positive for that company. So with that in mind, I think the sell down presents uh, pretty unique, excellent opportunities for long-term investing. And the objective of the crackdowns of the tightening in regulation is not to destroy the economy, it's not to destroy companies. It is to ensure that the entire economy is on a better footing, more innovative, more competitive, which over the long run, will benefit the society and the economy. So the simple answer is yes, uh, it's possibly even a better time to invest in China now than before. But for those who are interested or for those who are confused or for those who want to find out more as to what is happening, Capital Dynamics and I will be organizing a virtual talk, virtual event on the situation in China. In other words, this virtual conference that we're having will explore the reasons for such policies, the objectives of the tightening, and whether the environment is safe, and what sort of companies that investors may possibly be investing in uh, given the current environment. The Chinese government is cracking down on sectors like technology, private education, entertainment, gaming. Is China still a safe place to invest? Let's hear it from Tan Ding Bu, an investment veteran of 40 years. I think the first factor that everyone has to bear in mind is that whichever market that you invest in, uh, there will always be downside risk and upside potential. So given that the Crackdowns have been going on for about 9 to 12 months. Many of the sectors, many of the stocks, many of the companies that have been affected have seen their stock prices uh, falling by quite a substantial margin, you know, 30%, 40%, 50%. Depending on the sectors and the companies that you're looking at, I think the fact that the stock prices have dropped so much, I think they would have discounted a lot of the possible negative or risk factors that would be associated with the crackdowns. Given the intention, the objective of the tightening of the government's regulations in China, which overall in the long term are positive for the economy, and if the company is well managed, it will also be positive for that company. So with that in mind, I think the sell down presents uh, pretty unique, excellent opportunities for long-term investing. And the objective of the crackdowns of the tightening in regulation is not to destroy the economy, it's not to destroy companies. It is to ensure that the entire economy is on a better footing, more innovative, more competitive, which over the long run will benefit 
the society and the economy? So the simple answer is yes. Uh, it's possibly even a better time to invest in China now than before. But for those who are interested or for those who are confused or for those who want to find out more as to what is happening, Capital Dynamics and I will be organizing a virtual talk, virtual event on the situation in China. In other words, this virtual conference that we're having will explore the reasons for such policies, the objectives of the tightening and whether the environment is safe and what sort of companies that investors may possibly be investing in uh, given the current environment. The Chinese government is cracking down on sectors like technology, private education, entertainment, gaming. Is China still a safe place to invest? Let's hear it from Tan Ding Bu, an investment veteran of 40 years. I think the first factor that everyone has to bear in mind is that whichever market that you invest in, there will always be downside risk and upside potential. So given that the crackdowns have been going on for about 9 to 12 months. Many of the sectors, many of the stocks, many of the companies that have been affected have seen their stock prices uh, falling by quite a substantial margin, you know, 30%, 40-50%. Depending on the sectors and the companies that you're looking at, I think the fact that the stock prices have dropped so much, I think they would have discounted a lot of the possible negative or risk factors that would be associated with the crackdowns. Given the intention, the objective of the tightening of the government's regulations in China, which overall in the long term are positive for the economy, and if the company is well managed, it will also be positive for that company. So with that in mind, I think the sell down presents uh, pretty unique, excellent opportunities for long-term investing. And the objective of the crackdowns of the tightening in regulation is not to destroy the economy, it's not to destroy companies. It is to ensure that the entire economy is on a better footing, more innovative, more competitive, which over the long run will benefit the society and the economy. So the simple answer is yes. Uh, it's possibly even a better time to invest in China now than before. But for those who are interested or for those who are confused or for those who want to find out more as to what is happening, Capital Dynamics and I will be organizing a virtual talk, virtual event on the situation in China. In other words, this virtual conference that we're having will explore the reasons for such policies, the objectives of the tightening, and whether the environment is safe, and what sort of companies that investors may possibly be investing in uh, given the current environment. Hello everyone, thank you for joining our live stream today. By way of introduction, I'm Xiao, your MC for tonight. In this live session, we will be sharing with you a sneak preview of our upcoming virtual conference. Is China still a safe place to invest? Which will be held on 13th and 14th November. We are also running a simple poll here. Feel free to submit your response. Capital Dynamics is always sharing our investments insight with our followers on social media channels. If you enjoy our content, show us your support by smashing the like and subscribe button on our Facebook and YouTube channels. To reward those of you who are online, online now, 
we are giving away a special offer for our upcoming virtual conference. Is China still a safe place to invest? For the first 30 participants who successfully registered today, you can purchase the tickets at a special price of only 338 ringgit per ticket, which is originally priced at 1,000 ringgit. Please click the registration link at the comment sections under our YouTube and Facebook Live. This special offer is only valid for today. This topic is high in demand. We are seeing a lot of interest. Grab yours now. Another reward for the newcomers. We are giving away a 30-day complimentary digital access to our flagship investment publication, iCapital. What is iCapital? Published by Capital Dynamics, Sandian Bahar, the first independent investment advisor in Malaysia. iCapital provides you with objective investment research and analysis on local and global stock markets and economies. iCapital is available in tabloid, online, and mobile app. It is also available in English and Mandarin. Hurry up and register for the 30-day complimentary digital access now. You may find the link to re register at the comment section of our YouTube and Facebook Live. So, here are some questions for you all. Are you getting more confused with the ongoing crackdowns in China? Should you invest in China or get out now? Let me tell you, our iCapital China Fund investors are happily investing in the Chinese stock markets. The net asset value for our iCapital China Fund is at all-time high despite very turbulent stock markets in China. Since 1st January 2018, our China Fund's NAV has surged more than 22%, while the largest ETF in Hong Kong lost 26%. Investors who have invested in China Fund will be 60% richer than those who invested in the Hong Kong ETF. Market value of education stocks in China, such as New, New Oriental Education and TAL Education Group, have been wiped out. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Dan Dengbu, speaker for the talk on Is China Still a Safe Place to Invest? Who is he? A lot of people have the misconception that to be able to understand China, you should be able to speak and read Chinese. That is not true. Dan Ding Bu cannot read and speak Chinese. But Dan Ding Bu is the greatest China analyst there is. He reads the Chinese government policies correctly and picks the right stocks. Dan Ding Bu can put together economics, politics, culture, history, Xi Jinping, and the future of China for you. By attending the talks on the 13th and 14th November, Dan Ding Bu can show you clearly where China is heading. How does he do it? Now, let Dan Ningbu explain to you what he will be talking about. Thanks, Cheryl. Hi, everyone. Uh, just a quick update on the poll results from the Facebook. It looks like uh, three quarters of you are uh, making money with your investment in China. And three quarters of you from YouTube are also making money in China. The rest are not making money. So it looks like majority, big majority making money. Uh, maybe my talk on 13 and 14 November is not, uh, is redundant because there's no need to, to understand China better already. Nevertheless, uh, let me just, I mean, the, the, the fact that uh, most of you are making money. I just would like to share the experiences that we have encountered over the years uh, because we find that investing in China is not the same as investing in uh, Malaysia or say US. Lonely planet used to describe China not as a different world, but as a different planet. It's totally a different planet from the rest of the world. China is changing rapidly. You know that it is transforming all the time. Uh, new problems are cropping up. New successes are coming up. And new opportun 
opportunities are being thrown up almost almost every day. And the question that, you know, the, the reason why we are having this talk, whether it is still safe to invest in China is because in the last nine to 12 months, China has introduced quite a number of measures, uh, tighten up their policies, new regulations, and launch a lot of crackdowns. So many people were worried, scared as to what is happening. So the question when you're investing, not just in China, but in any uh, other country, what happens when new policies, new measures are introduced? And I'm very sure that the Chinese government, in the years to come, will be launching more policies, more measures. So when that situation arises, how would you interpret that? Would you be frightened? Would you be confused? Or would you still be able to navigate through uh, this sort of circumstances successfully? So my talk on 13th, 14th November, to explain to participants the framework, whether it's regulatory or political, the philosophy and the objectives of the Chinese government and the Communist Party of China. So that once you're able to see and understand China from that holistic perspective, then in future, I mean, future could be what, next year, could be three years, five years from now, no, nobody knows. Uh, when new policies, when new measures are announced, then you do not have to be worried because you will be able to understand the rationale and the objectives that the Chinese government are trying to achieve. That is a very important uh, objective of our talk on the 13 and 14 November. If you read the Western media, and if you listen to Western <coughs> politicians, uh, they keep frightening you. They keep saying that uh, Xi Jinping is becoming another uh, Mao, Mao Zedong, another Mao Chusi. So, I mean, it's important whether uh, Xi Jinping is taking China back to the days where everybody is uh, pretty poor but equal, or whether Xi Jinping is embarking on something that is very different. Don't forget what Xi Jinping is uh, facing now in China. Uh, it's not just domestic. The issues within China itself are great, uh, very structural, very fundamental, but China is at the same time facing a very hostile external environment. About 20 odd years ago when I started uh, sharing my bullish views about China. I say that there's one thing that you must understand the situation that China is in. China faces very, very tough competitors, meaning United States, Europe, Japan, and Britain. Uh, these are competitors that are experienced, smart, and have a lot of uh, resources. So with that kind of external environment, you find that China, as it tries to transform and successfully develop, China cannot make a mistake, not even a single mistake. Because the minute China does that, I can guarantee you, this is one, guarantee that I will give you willingly, the United States will pounce on China and will break, up, break China up. And before you know it, the United States will have made China a colony of the United States. So what I'm trying to say is that whatever policies, whatever measures that uh, CPC and un currently under Xi Jinping is undertaking, has to be very carefully thought out, very carefully planned and carefully executed so that China does not open herself up to external threats, which 
are growing by the day. I mean, you can see for yourself, you can read for yourself, the Western media, the Western politicians attacking China uh, from all angles. And in the current uh, environment, they are also bringing countries like India to uh, strengthen their alliances to work against China. So that external environment in, that China is facing uh, will, will, will continue and it will worsen. So how would that in fact affect your investment? That will definitely affect Chinese policies and so on. Now, the analysts that you see from other houses, the only big stocks. But for us uh, in Capital Dynamics, we take a different approach. We do a lot more than that. You know, in an uh, emerging market like China, uh, well, I mean, Malaysia is also emerging, uh, but like I always share, you know, Malaysia emerges at a very slow pace and quite often Malaysia will go stun, go reverse. In the case of China, they emerge very fast, very rapidly in one forward direction. So to be able to understand uh, and pick the right stocks, you got to be able to understand more than just the companies. You got to understand the environment, business environment, economic environment, and so on. So in our case, we have Capital Dynamics has the business in China. In fact, we own our office in Shanghai. We are able to approach our investment in China from a holistic uh, view. We look at it holistically. So that I think is something that gives us an advantage over others. And it's because we are able to understand the uh, situation in China maybe better than other analysts. We were not exposed to any of the property stocks. We did not have any of the education stocks uh, or the gaming stocks. It's not that we don't research. Uh, we research on them. I have met with many of the property companies, uh, New Oriental Education, uh, which has plunged about 80% since the last nine months. Uh, we met them in Beijing 10 years ago. So once you understand what the Chinese government is trying to do, then you would be able to manage your risk a lot better than just blindly picking a stock on its own. The research that I've done on China uh, is not the result of one week, one week's work, you know, where because the talk is coming up, so I quickly go and do the research or not because of one month of work or not even one year. And the, the research I have conducted on China is not just history, economics, or politics. It's all aspects and it's taken a lifetime. So although my uh, MC at the very beginning said that he's giving a special discount, it's not $1,000 giving you three, uh, three, 338. I was telling them, I was telling, explaining to my staff that based on the insights that we are able to share with you, uh, the understanding that we're able to bring to you with regards to the Chinese policies, uh, the Communist Party, how it works, we, a fair price should be something like 20, 30,000 ringgit. Let me just share something. This is a book. Uh, it's a collection of books. I hope you can see it. Uh, you can't see it. Okay, you can. All right. Why and how the CPC works in China? Uh, if you look at the back of this, it's very, very heavy. Inside this package, there are actually five volumes. The first volume is on why and how the CPC works in China. Second volume is on governing China. Third is challenges for China. The fourth volume is fighting corruption. And the fifth volume is governing the party. So this is just uh, one material on understanding the Communist Party of China. So I think what we're able to present to you on 13, 14 November uh, is very different, it's very unique. Uh, we are pretty sure that what you read 
from the normal media, whether it's Western or other Asian media, what you hear from other analysts, uh, what we are going to share with you on the 13th, 14th of November will be different and very insightful. And we're pretty sure that if you sit through that session with us, you would have a much better appreciation of what Xi Jinping and the Communist Party of China is trying to achieve with his common prosperity, with his crackdowns, and so on and so forth. So with that, uh, we look forward to having as many of you as we possibly can on 13, 14 November. And I will pass the session back to uh, Xiang. Thank you, Tengu, for your great sharing. Next, we have a few questions coming in. So the first question is asked by Kaman Chong. Her question is, is there a difference between both events held on 13 and 14 November 2021? To answer your question, the contents for both days are the same except that on the 13 November, the event will be conducted in English and the 14 November event will be in Mandarin. The second question is asked by Serene Chow. Her question is, I'm, I'm interested in your China fund. Where can I get more information? You can get more information in www.capitaldynamics.hk or you can call us or email us, giving us your phone number. Our staff will get in touch with you soon. The next question is asked by Malcolm Dunn. His question is, will I be getting discount if I reg register tonight? Yes. For the first 30 participants who successfully register today, you can purchase the tickets at a special price of only 338 ringgit per ticket, which is originally priced at 1,000 ringgit. So for the following questions, I would like to pass to Tengu to answer. Okay, uh, the question is, uh, will China's policy demotivate its people in creating wealth, assuming human is self-centered? Okay, that is a very good question, a uh, very tough question, because uh, when you say whether the policy will demotivate the Chinese people, you're talking about 1.4 billion people. So how would 1.4 billion people respond to the policies of the Chinese, the recent policies of the Chinese government. Um, we can do a lot of surveys, you can do a lot of polling, but what I'm going to share with you is that uh, very simple answer, and the answer is no. From the uh, feedback that I've gotten from the research that I've done, which is from multiple sources, in fact, a lot of the Chinese ordinary people, I'm not talking about people like Jack Ma or the founder of Evergrande and all that. I'm talking about the masses. They are actually happy. I mean, for example, uh, the new policy whereby the children cannot have too much homework, or there's a new law that says that the children, when they go to school, they must have at least one hour of sports. Those are welcomed by, I wouldn't say all parents, but welcomed by a lot of parents because it will lead to a much healthier development of, for example, in this case, children. So the uh, simple answer to this question is no. It most likely, if you look at the polls done by different organizations, the level of satisfaction that the ordinary people have in the Communist Party of China and Xi Jinping is at an extremely high level. But I mean, if you want more, we can talk more about this on the 13th of November, where we have a lot more time. Okay, the next question is, do I worry about China's property sector and whether the coming property tax, what would the impact would be? It looks scary. Would there be a property bubble burst in China? Um, 
a very complicated question and we don't have much time tonight, but just a quick answer. This so-called property tax that the Chinese government has been thinking of, they've been thinking about it for, oh, it's 2021, they've been thinking about it for about 20 plus years really. It's not something uh, that they thought about it just a year or two ago. They have been discussing it again and again. And finally, now they may be able to introduce to selected cities, in fact, they have already experimented with some property tax in two cities in China uh, many years ago, and the revenue collected has not been very substantial. So what the Chinese government would like to do is to broaden the revenue base of the local governments who are relying a lot on the uh, property sales and so on and so forth. So because of that, they are facing quite a lot of resistance when they are thinking of implementing this property tax. But the day has come probably because of what China is in now, the situation that China is in now, that there will be some form of uh, property tax being rolled out on a stage by stage basis. Again, uh, it's a complicated, it's a very long topic and we can discuss more on 13th November. Well, I'll be giving stock recommendations uh, in my 13th November talk. I, well, I guess, you know, along the way, we will be mentioning uh, stocks that we have chosen. Like, for example, uh, we have bought uh, Xpeng in our China fund. And Xpeng just within today itself has gone up, uh, I think, 20 plus dollars, Hong Kong dollars. So when we discuss things like that, uh, along the way, we'll be sharing with, with you all our thoughts, the reasoning why we sell a certain stock, why we bought a certain stock. And then uh, the next question is, uh, firms in China operate in an uncertain, politically influenced investment climate. Uh, why am I still interested in China stock? Simple, because every country uh, has an uncertain and politically influenced investment climate. There's no country in the world that doesn't have this. If you look at America, what is happening in America? Joseph Biden is struggling to get his infrastructure plan approved. But within the Democratic Party itself, there are so many opposition uh, factions which are opposing to his uh, infrastructure plan. That is uncertain. That is politically influenced by the, not this, not by Republicans, this is by the Democrats themselves. That's just the infrastructure plan. And then uh, they have the debt where they recently extended the debt ceiling up to December. But by December, you come to a situation where the US politicians have to vote again. Otherwise, uh, the US government has to default, which of course would be a catastrophe for, for the global economy. So that kind of uh, environment is that uncertain? Yes, because you cannot have a government that has to keep on extending their debt ceiling on a month-to-month -month basis. Is that politically influenced? Definitely, because the Republicans will not want to agree with the Democrats unless the Democrats were to give in something, give them something in return. So every country is the same. Malaysia is the same. Malaysia is even worse. Uh, not only is it politically influenced, the political influence is very lopsided, very one-sided. So the next question would be, uh, will the crackdown be part of Xi Jinping's effort to eliminate Jiang Qimin and company to clear all obstacles prior to the next year's uh, National Congress. Okay, uh, again, the question that you all raised, the question that are being raised are very complicated question, but I will try because our session is very uh, short. So this question has been raised quite often. And if you read the Western media and Western politicians, they'll tell you that Xi Jinping's 
anti-corruption campaign is to make him a super strong man. Uh, this crackdown of uh, Ma Yun, uh, Chen Ma, and so on and so forth is also to make sure that uh, Xi Jinping strengthen his political base. And Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign has been going on ever since he became president in 20, at the end of 2012. So it's been running for about close to nine years. And ever since then, I maintain the same view. I've said that Xi Jinping, uh, okay, the objective of Xi Jinping is not to strengthen his political position because he is now the uh, chairman of the Central Military Commission, the CMC, which is uh, one of the most powerful commission in China. He is the Secretary General of the Communist Party of China, which is also a very powerful position. He is also President of China. So he is really holding three most politically powerful positions in China. Uh, I don't think he needs to strengthen his base anymore. But to answer your question, he has got a larger objective. Uh, let me, if you come to 13 November, uh, because you've got to explain uh, what he's trying to do, not in just one sentence. If you come to 13 November, I can share. If you ask the same question again, I'll be able to share with you in greater details why that is not his objective. His objective is, uh, I think is looking towards 2049, where, the China will be celebrating, the, the PRC will be celebrating a centenary. And that is where common prosperity will, should be achieved by them. So I'm a lot more uh, positive about what Xi Jinping is trying to do with regards to the whole of China. Uh, US outlook, you, sorry, outlook on US dollar versus renminbi. Uh, I think this sort of questions, it's, I can give you an answer now, but by one month, two months, three months later, my answer will change because it really depends on a few factors. It depends on both the economic conditions of US and China, which in the current environment is also dependent on how the countries manage the pandemic. And in addition to that, also the inflation situation in the US, you have inflation that has been rising rapidly. So the question is, will inflation in the US worsen or has it peaked, right? Because that would affect US monetary policy, US interest rate, and therefore uh, the exchange rate of US dollar vis-a-vis -vis other currencies. So that, uh, this, this question, I can give you the factors, but to give you an answer, it's a fluid answer, it will change when the factors uh, change again. And we have one more question is, uh, will the high crude, oil, high crude oil and natural gas prices continue in the first quarter of 2022? Uh, okay, we, we can give you an answer, but normally we don't focus on such type of uh, research because first quarter is only about a couple of months away. Our research are typically uh, much longer term than that. Over the next couple of months, anything can happen. You can have the warmest winter the world has ever seen. You know, we talk about climate change. Then suddenly come um, December, January, US, no snow. But the warmest winter, China, no snow. Europe, no snow. Warmest winter, then suddenly demand for this type of energy products will plummet. Then the price will drop. So over the next couple of months, I think it's anybody's guess, uh, especially in the current situation where there are so many unprecedented supply chain disruption. You could have suddenly one major gas pipeline burst because of severe snowstorm, then the natural gas price will shoot up again. So I think I want to move away from being able to see what it's like over the next couple of months. Any more questions? Okay, so I guess that's the question, last question that I have. Maybe I pass back to Shia. 
So that's all for the Q&A sessions. Unfortunately, we are unable to reply all of your questions. So if you would like to know more, do join our upcoming virtual event. Now, we have come to the end of the live session, but I want to tell you all that the first 30 special price tickets will be available, will be available until they are all snapped out. So also, we will be closing the registration of our 30-day complimentary iCapital digital access in 30 minutes' time. So, what are you waiting for? Hurry up! For those of you who have missed out on the special price tickets to the virtual conference and 30-day complimentary iCapital digital access, don't worry. Join us on our next live session in Mandarin this Thursday, 8 p.m. or this coming Saturday, 30 no October, 30 October at 11 a.m. in English and 2.30 p.m. in Mandarin. Once again, follow us by clicking the like and subscribe button on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Thank you and hope to see you at our virtual event. Bye.